All right, welcome to part three. So in the last videos, we've put together our car, we've rigged it up, and in the next two videos, we are going to work on scripting it. So in this first video, we're just gonna do the server-side scripting. So we're gonna set up the seat handling and uh, everything of that nature. <clears throat> so very first thing we wanna do is create a vehicle seat. So right click, insert object, type in vehicle seat. And first things, let's make sure that we have it sized properly. So we're just gonna set it to, it really doesn't matter to be honest. But one thing we wanna do, we wanna set the transparency to one. We wanna set can collide to false. We wanna set massless. Okay. And then we're gonna use our commands again and we're gonna write back our little C frames trick because we want to set that seat into the same seat frame position as our car. So I'm going to paste that there. I'm going to select a vehicle seat first, and then I'm going to select the body. I'm going to run the command. And now I have my vehicle seat in the car. So I'm actually going to drop it down a couple notches. And then I'm going to put it into the car body. And then I'm going to weld it. So I'm going to create a weld constraint. And this time I don't have to script this in, I can just select it. So create the weld constraint, select part one, set it to itself, the vehicle seat. Part two, set to the body. Okay, so now we have our vehicle seat in, it's welded, ready to go. So let's start to actually script this in now. So I'm gonna create a script right here and I'm gonna call it our handler. So what we want to do here is basically when a player touches this car here, we want to basically teleport them into the seat because the car is collidable, right? So right now there's no way for the character to get to the seat in order to sit. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a touched event on the body of this car. And when that happens, we're gonna force the player to sit in the seat. And then we're gonna add some other logic on there to track some stuff as well. So first let's set up the touch listener and stuff of that nature. So we're gonna go to the car handler script and we're gonna write some variables first. So we'll car equals script.parent. Local seat equals script or car.body.vehicle seat. And the actual body part that we want to listen for is car.body.body. Okay, so we're going to create a function body touch and hook that up to body.touched connect body touch. So anytime a part touches the body part of our mesh, it will fire this function with the part that touched it. So we need to check if this part is a character or rather a player. So the way we can do that, if we go to our API here, if we look at our players service, we go down to functions. There is a function called get player from character. So what we do is we pass in a part or rather a model, which we think might be the character model. And if it is, it will return a player object. If it's not, it will return nil. So using that information, we can assume that the character is the part's parent. So the player might be game up players get care get player from character and then pass in what we think is the character model. So if this is successful, if this part actually came from a player, then this player model or player variable will be an object. And if not, it won't be. So we can just say, if not player, then return in. So in other words, if this player variable is nil, then stop, we don't care, don't go on. So going forward, we know that the player is there and everything. So we need to do something. Well, we need to sit the player into the seat. 
So we're going back to our API here. Let's go to the vehicle seat. And we can see under functions that there is a sit function. So how do we use it? We pass a humanoid into it. So pretty simple. So we go to seat, sit, and then we need to pass the humanoid. But we need to get that humanoid. So the way we can do that, we can say character find first child. I believe is of class humanoid. So let me double check that. So every instance has that. So I can just go to this vehicle seat. Yes, find first child of class. And the reason we're doing that instead of just find first child is, you know, the humanoid might be named something different. So this way we can just check it based on the class name. So just in case, we can check if not humanoid, then return end. I don't know why a character model would not have a humanoid, but just in case, I don't know how your game is programmed. Let's be careful. So if there's no humanoid that is found, don't go on. But otherwise, we need to sit the player into the seat. So pretty simple, right? Pretty simple, but there's some problems here. So imagine this in gameplay. Well, what if there's already a player in the seat? Well, if that's the case, then we don't want to run this code. We don't want to try to sit a player when someone's already in the seat. So a way we can check that, if we go to vehicle seat and we look at the occupant property right here, you can see it's grayed out because you can't just write to it. But the occupant property will hold the humanoid object if there's a humanoid sitting there. So we can just check this property. If it's not nil, then someone's sitting there, we should stop. So logically, if seat not occupant, then return end. In other words, if there's an occupant, just stop. Don't go on. Let's not even try to run any operations. So that's the first check we're going to do. OK, another thing we need to do is create some sort of debound system. And the reason for that is if you imagine we're sitting here and imagine you jump out. Well, right when you jump out, you're going to be touching that body again of the car. Uh, and so right when you jump out, you're going to be sat right back into the seat. So we need to add some sort of cooldown system in order to disable any sitting of the seat during certain periods of time. And there's some easy ways to do this. We're going to do a little more complex version because we don't want it. We're going to run this function later on in another area of the script. Um, so we're going to write a function called cooldown and then duration. And basically, we can call this function and say, uh, for one second, I don't want any of this to run. OK. And we're going to write a variable here, cool down, and we're going to set it to 0. And I'll explain this in a second, but we're also going to throw it here. So if c to occupant 4, cooldown is not equal to 0, then return in. So in other words, if this value is 0, then we know we're good to go, we're enabled, and can run forward. But if it's not 0, we're cooling down, so don't do anything. And the reason we're using a number and not a boolean is because we're going to use a unique value in order to track which cooldown we're doing so they don't step on each other's toes. So we're going to cooldown tag equals tick just to get a relatively unique value. And then we're going to set that cooldown variable there to that tag. So just like that. And then we're going to do a delay and when the duration that we want. And then once that's done, we need to check if the cooldown tag is the same as the cooldown. So if cooldown is equal to cooldown tag, then set cooldown to zero again, reset. And again, the reason we're doing this is to not step on each other's toes. So imagine I run cooldown three and then cooldown one. Well, who has priority here? So if cooldown three goes, uh, he's going to wait three seconds. But then this one waits one second. But this should have priority, right? So after one second, it's going to set cooldown to zero. But then this is going to wait three seconds and then try to do that at the same time. Um, we don't want that. And it gets even more tricky if it's like this, right? If it's cooldown one, so in one second, I want to enable it again. But then right away, I set here to three. So uh, after three seconds, I wanted to enable. So what happens here? So after one second, it says, oh, should I, should I be enabled again? 
Well, no, because this guy actually took priority. And we know that because he has the most latest tag here. And so that's just kind of a, a nice trick to make sure that you only have like the most recent version running <clears throat> to check for that. So we have our cooldown function written and that should be good to go. So let's try it. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna do play here. Okay, so if I touch the car, boom, I am in it. If I jump out, now I'm not in it. <laughs> and you can see it's kind of glitching out and I'll explain why that is in a minute here. But relatively speaking, it's working. I kind of get trapped in there. And again, the wheels are getting a little messed up because of some physics problems. So the problem that we have still is while our code is working, um, we're having a physics problem on two, on, on two different planes. So the first one is our player character model here is colliding with the car. So we're forcing it inside of the car, which is not good. We don't want that sort of physical constrained thing happening there. That's why it kind of jumps around when I get in and out of the car. The second is the player has mass and we want to change that. We want to make the player massless when inside the car. So we can solve this uh, in a pretty easy way. And let's look at that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to capture when the player gets in and out of the car. So we need to change some stuff around. So obviously we can, we can track when the player gets into the car. And so let's track that player somehow. So we'll have local occupied player. And by default, it's a nil. Um, if you want, you can just cut that off too and it's the same thing. So by default, it's nil. But when we sit in the seat, we want to set that to the player. So how do we check if the player left the car though? Well, we can do that by listening for the seat's occupant property to change. So let's write another function, occupant change. And then listen to that. So seat get property changed signal, occupant, and connect that to our occupant changed function. Okay. So now that we have that done, now we can check to see uh, if this is nil or not, because this will also fire when an occupant is added, not just removed. So we don't care if it's added. So if c.occupant stop. Otherwise we know the occupant left, so we can capture this. So what do we need to check for? Well, first of all, we know eventually we're gonna say, well, occupant player is nil now, so that doesn't matter. But now we need to do some stuff with the character. Like I was saying, we, we have a collision problem. We want to change the collision of the player so it doesn't interact with the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another collision group and we're just gonna call it character. And we don't want it to collide with the car body or really we don't want it to collide with the wheels either. So let's just disable the, both of those. Okay. Now we need to write another function to modify the character parts of the player, uh, both when they enter the car and when they leave. So I'm gonna create another function, probably right here, why not? And we'll call it set model collide, or rather set character collide. And we'll pass whether or not the player should collide with the car. And we should also pass the character model as well. <laughs> All right. So right here, we will call that function. We'll pass the character model and we'll say, no, it should not collide. And when they leave, we should say, yes, they should collide, but we need to capture the character. So we could do this. We could say, you know, occupied player that character. However, let's think about a use case here. What if the reason the occupant changed and left is because the player left? Well, if that happened, then the character model is nil. So we don't want to do that. So really we should check to see if this even exists first. So if there is a character, then we'll run that function. Okay, so now to write this function in, uh, we can use a, a get descendants in order to get all the parts of the character. 
and then we can modify what we need. So let's first write the loop. So for part in I pairs character get descendants. Then we need to make sure that part is actually a part. Okay, so now we can guarantee that this part is a part. Base part is like the super class of all parts within Studio here. So we need to do a couple things. First of all, we need to set the massless part property. It should be massless if you shouldn't collide. So we can just invert the value there. And then we need to set the physics collision group. So how do we do this here? We can do that using the physics service set part collision group. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. So let's reference that somewhere up here. Physics service. Okay. And then we should also track our collision groups. So we have the default collision group, which is always just default. And then we have the character collision group, which is, in our case, character. Again, this is case sensitive, so make sure it matches up exactly how you created it in the collision editor. Okay. So we're going to switch between these two uh, for the character. So let's uh, first resolve what that collision group should be. So if should collide, then it should be the default. Otherwise, it should be the character one. Okay. So then we can do physics service, set collision, set part collision group. And we, we give it the part and the name of the collision group. So part and then group, just like that. Okay, so now that we've set that, the very last thing we need to do is set network ownership. So right here, we're just gonna say car.primary part, set network owner, and we're gonna set that to the player. And then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. So car.primary part, set network ownership auto. So this will explicitly force uh, the server to hand over physics network ownership to the player. So things will be a lot more smooth for that player driving the car. And then when they leave the car, it, the server will basically say, well, it'll figure out who owns it automatically. So maybe the server owns it, maybe the player does, doesn't matter. Just reset it basically. Okay, so now all of that is set. So let's try playing it again. So we touch it and we get into it. And you can see it's not glitching out as much anymore. We can see a little glitch out when we leave the seat. Sometimes we get right back into it like that. So the last fix for that is to go to the car handler and we're gonna take this cooldown function again and we're gonna throw it here. It's gonna cool down for you know, maybe three seconds. So we're gonna play again. Now if we wait a second, jump out, we don't get trapped in it again. Cool. So that concludes part three here. And then part four, we're gonna write the client side script where we're gonna actually allow the player to drive the car.